Welcome back to Logo Legends, the podcast on sports teams and their logos, branding, and identities throughout team history. I'm your host, Kasavi. New episodes will be every Thursday on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and my personal YouTube channel, which is K-A-S-A-B-E. We'll have some visualizations along with the YouTube video on there. Although we will be taking a break next Thursday for the Thanksgiving Day holiday, so expect a new episode every Thursday two weeks out. Last week we talked about the Cleveland Browns, which have one of the most off-the-wall logo sets in sports today. They have an elf, a helmet, a bulldog, just a multitude of things that are very different from each other. If you missed that episode, you can catch up on our YouTube channel with the visualizations like I mentioned. But since we have talked about baseball and football up to this point, we're going to be going to the other four major sports in North America, which are hockey and basketball. Today's episode will be focusing on basketball and some of the teams that have some weird names in the geographic locations that they no longer belong to. Typically, when you have a sports team, their nickname or identity is chosen from something that's close to the region. It could be something that's a commonly found animal, an item that's made in that area, a natural occurrence, or just something tied to the local culture. So while this isn't always the case, it usually proves as an inspiration for something that people can more easily identify in that area. Baseball has a lot of these team names. So for example, you have the Twins, the Phillies, and the Mets, the Twins being named after the Twin Cities area, the Phillies being named after Philadelphia, and the Mets being shortened from the Metropolitans. In basketball, there's also a few other examples of that double entendre. So for example, the Detroit Pistons are based off of the horsepower metric of the piston or strength of the car, but also because Detroit is the manufacturing plants for General Motors and Chrysler. The Houston Rockets are another example as Houston is the headquarters for NASA. So there's a lot of rocket launches and space related projects that happen in the area. However, there's three NBA teams that were moved or supplanted from their original city, and the nicknames that they carried over with them don't make a ton of geographic sense anymore. I'll start with the least glaring of the bunch, and that is the Memphis Grizzlies. So back in the early 90s, the NBA was looking to expand to international markets, and as a result, they added two new teams to Canada, which were the Toronto Raptors and the Vancouver Grizzlies. Toronto made a lot of sense because it's the largest city in Canada, but also because you have a ton of teams in the United States over on the East Coast, so travel was an easy form of playing those teams without having to spend a whole lot of money to travel. Meanwhile, the Grizzlies being over on the west coast of Canada ensured two things. One, they wouldn't interfere with the Toronto Raptors and the new fans that were clamoring to support each of those new teams, but also because Vancouver actually had a sports venue in place that they didn't have to build from scratch, as they had the same arena that the Vancouver Canucks would play at. Also, fun fact, the team nickname for Vancouver was narrowed down to two choices. You had the Grizzlies and the Mounties. The Mounties was the favorite for a while, but the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, or the real Mounties, had some pushback, so they ended up opting for the Grizzlies name instead. The Grizzlies only lasted in Vancouver for six seasons, which most people would attribute to low attendance. But the NBA didn't do the Grizzlies or the Raptors any favors during their first three seasons, because despite how poorly they finished in the regular season, they could not get a top five lottery pick. As a result, they didn't get much star talent into their teams, and fans weren't as interested. It's actually quite incredible the Raptors were able to survive, and that was because they were still able to find players like Vince Carter and Tracy McGrady. The Grizzlies decided to move to Memphis for the start of the 2001-2002 to season and keep their team name as a result, despite Grizzlies being native to British Columbia and not being found anywhere east of the Mississippi. The Memphis area embraced the name though as they actually had a football team called the Memphis Grizzlies in the 1970s. Memphis also did have a team in the American Basketball Association during the 1970s, but their name changed every couple years and nothing really stuck. Similarly, the Utah Jazz moved to New Orleans and kept their name. Having a team in the New Orleans area being called the Jazz is just a match made in heaven because of the culture and jazz scene in Louisiana. But there were numerous problems for the Jazz upon their first few years in New Orleans in the 1970s. There were scheduling conflicts with Mardi Gras, and they had a court that they played on that was raised, so any players who might have attempted to get a ball out of bounds, for example, might risk injuring themselves and as a result, they actually had a net put in place so that any players who fell off the side of the court might be better protected from injury. There are also concerns about a lack of advertising and corporate sponsors, which is huge for the financial stability 
of a team. While the Jazz never made the playoffs in New Orleans either, there were some concerns that they wouldn't even be able to play their playoff games at home just due to other scheduling conflicts. New Orleans also has quite a few taxes for entertainment, so they had some of the highest tax rates in the league, which can really cost a pretty penny for both season ticket holders and people who just wanted to go to a single game. At the time, the tax rate was 11% for any purchases made on tickets. So because of the financial woes, the Jazz decided to cut their losses quickly and move to Salt Lake City, Utah. Salt Lake City was a slightly smaller market than New Orleans, but they did have some previous successes from the Utah team in the ABA, so there was some fan interest that garnered right away. But since the move was so quick, the Jazz literally did not have a chance to change their name even if they wanted to, and they began play in 1979 to 1980. When the Jazz moved to Utah, they struggled for a few more years before eventually getting lucky in the draft with the likes of Carl Malone and John Stockton, and because of that they ended up making the playoffs quite significantly after 1985. The Jazz never won the NBA Finals with Stockton and Malone, but their consistent success led to the Jazz being much better off financially. I should also mention, when the Jazz moved from New Orleans to Utah, they kept their Mardi Gras color scheme, which was purple, yellow, and green. That led to an update in the 1990s, and the Jazz's purple uniforms are some of the most iconic in NBA history. So as with many metropolitan areas, there's typically pockets of local music scenes where the Jazz is still kind of somewhat relevant to the Utah area, not quite as much as New Orleans. So it doesn't make a ton of sense, all things considered. So while the Jazz had the option to rebrand after the 1980 season, they kept on with the Jazz nickname, and it's been around ever since. The last questionable NBA nickname is one that's so far gone from the original, there's never a chance it's going to be changed. That team is the 17-time champion Los Angeles Lakers. However, five of those titles were won before they even moved to Los Angeles. In 1947, Ben Berger and Morris Chafflin purchased the rights to the Detroit Gems of the National Basketball League, which essentially was just the deed to the team. All of the other players from the Gems, who had won a grand total of four games, were diverted to other rosters in the league. It was up to Berger and Shafflin to build an entire team from scratch, which they had decided to call the Minneapolis Lakers, since Minnesota was the land of 10,000 lakes. Around the same time, a basketball league called the Professional Basketball League of America folded, and the players from that league were entered into the NBL draft. Since the Gems had the worst record in the league, the new Lakers team was given control of the first pick. One of the most sought-after players in this draft was George Mikan, who was a 6'10 center from Illinois. Mikan was one of the first true big men in the sport, and due to his size, he had a signature hook shot that he used to go over the other defenders. The Lakers selected Mikan with the first overall pick, and his size and ability was enough to dominate the league in their first year of play. The Lakers won the NBL championship, and the NBA was formed the next year, where the Lakers would go on to win the next four out of five championships. The only year that the Lakers didn't win the NBA Finals during that time was the 1950-51 season because George Mikan fractured his leg. So after some successes, Mikan would retire at the age of 30 after some multiple other broken bones besides his leg, and the Lakers' success started to wane. He tried to come back in the 1955-56 season and played 37 games, but the Lakers were eventually bounced in the first round. The attendance in Minneapolis started to dwindle again after Mikan's second retirement, so much so that he was hired to become the head coach in 1958. He only had a record of 9-30 before he was fired later that year. So after the departure of Mikan as both a player and a coach... Minneapolis started to question whether or not they'd be able to sustain a pro franchise. There was also quite a bit of room over on the West Coast, including Los Angeles, which at the time was the third largest city in the United States. The Lakers were also starting to get back on the right footing as they had just drafted Elgin Baylor and would later draft Jerry West. So as a result, the Lakers moved to Los Angeles, only to be dominated by the Boston Celtics for the next 13 years, one of the best sports dynasties in history. The Celtics would make 13 NBA Finals from 1957 to 1969, and they only lost two of those. Of those 13 seasons, the Lakers would also make the NBA Finals eight times, but would lose each and every time to the Boston Celtics. But eventually they'd win the title in 1972, and go on to win 12 total titles in Los Angeles, cementing themselves as one of the most successful American sports brands and franchises in history. Across their time in both Minneapolis and Los Angeles, the Lakers have won 17 titles, most recently in 2020. So the question is, why didn't the Lakers change their name? I mean, after all, Minnesota has over 10,000 lakes, and California, as an entire state, just has 3,000. 
The only real answer was the Lakers' success, which they enjoyed in Minneapolis, and upon moving to Los Angeles, that was a big draw for crowds. The brand of the Lakers was so recognizable from their time in Minneapolis that I think it would have detracted from a name change. I'd also say that the Los Angeles Lakers has quite a bit of alliteration to it, to the point where it's snappy and easy to digest. It's a nickname that not many people question these days, just based on the continued success of the franchise. The Lakers' longest championship drought in their history has been from 1954 to 1972, and again, that wasn't for a lack of trying. They had gone to eight NBA Finals during that time, and had not managed to win one. The Lakers we know today owe a lot of their successes to their time in Minneapolis, and more so for the likes of George Mikan, which I'm happy to mention that the Lakers finally retired his number just a few weeks ago on October 30th, 2022. They had a whole ceremony where they put up his Minneapolis 99 into the rafters, and he finally got the respect he deserved. Shaquille O'Neal put it best at Mikan's funeral in 2005. Without number 99, there is no me. But what are your thoughts? Are there any nicknames that don't make a lick of sense to you? If you're listening on YouTube, be sure to leave a comment and let me know. Or you can tweet at me at Kasabi Compiles. Again, that's K-A-S-A-B-E, and then Compiles with a K. A special shout out to one of the sources for this video, and that's Stu Thornley, who has a ton of information on the Lakers' time in Minneapolis on his personal website. I also want to credit the NBA's main website, as they do a really bang-up job about all of the historical happenings in their league's history and they keep a lot of those on their website. Thank you for listening to this episode of Logo Legends. Again, we're off next Thursday for the Thanksgiving holiday, but we'll be back with more episodes every Thursday beyond that. For now, though, have a safe and happy holiday. Signing off, this is Kasavi.